Hi everyone, this is Jamie Sorensen with Two Peas in a Bucket, and I'm going to share with you three hybrid techniques that I used in the assembly of my pregnancy album. If you follow along with our blog at twopeasinabucket.typepad.com, I have been sharing um, a series on my personal tips for preparing and assembling a pregnancy book. So this is just a peek at the album itself, and you want to be sure and check out the blog for more details on that. So in today's video and the last installment of the series, I wanted to share three things. The first of which is how I edited these weekly snapshot photos, how I then put those photos into a digital template to document different um, weekly snapshots of my pregnancy, and finally, how I created my own circle labels that I then printed and used all throughout my scrapbook. Let's begin. Before we dive in, I just wanted to show you, I am working with Photoshop Elements. This is version six. And I just wanted to quickly go over some of the windows that we'll be using, starting out with the tool palette. Some of the tools in this palette that we'll be using are the move tool, the eyedropper tool, the straightener tool, the and the paint bucket. And we'll also work with changing color around um, in this bottom section here. And then we will be working a lot with the layers palette. And if you're not familiar or super comfortable with layers, just think of layers this way. Um, if you're working with a traditional paper layout, if you want to move your picture from point A to point B, you're going to physically pick up your picture and move it. So the computer version or the Photoshop version of that is just clicking on the layer saying, I want to move this thing right here. And so you just want to always make sure that you're clicking on the layer that you're wanting to work with. So that's briefly what we'll be using in Photoshop Elements for today's techniques, and let's get started. For the first hybrid technique, I'll be sharing how to merge two photos into one. I'm just setting up a new document by going to File, New, or Command N, and I'm adjusting the size to be a 4x6 size file. That way, if you decide to send these to a printer, it will be a standard photo size. However, you could certainly make it wider if you want more of um, a wider rectangle. So now I'm just going to go to File Open and I'm going to adjust the two images that I will be eventually merging into one image. I've taken a profile and a straight on photo of my belly and as you can see my setup here is a bathroom. Um, it provided the perfect private place to take as many photos as I wanted without feeling self-conscious or silly and the shower curtain made a nice backdrop. So I'd recommend finding a plain wall or something like this where you can um, easily merge two photos without the backdrop being really obvious. I've grabbed the straighten tool which is on the left you can see it's a little darker box and when using the straightener tool you're going to want to find a line or something maybe like the top of a building as an example um, that you know is going to be straight across and then the program will automatically straighten it for you Another example of how I edited my photos would be to adjust the levels. And I have a different photo here because I don't have the original. Um, but what I would do is open up the photo and then click on a new adjustment layer, which is this menu box that you see here. Click on Levels. And this will open up a window where you see sort of this mountainous scene. And there are three little triangles at the bottom, and I want to pull over that far right triangle so that it's more on the edge of that mountain graph. And what this is going to do is it's going to fix any underexposed image. And now I'm just saving these. Of course, you could make any further adjustments that you want to your image. And then now I'm going to my new document and I'm going to file place and I'm going to add the photo onto the canvas once one at a time.
I've placed the photo rather than clicking and dragging it over because I know I'm going to have an easier time scaling it. Um, so when you place the file, it has this box and you're able to drag and adjust it. And by holding the shift key, you can make it stay in proportion. So I have my rulers on and you can do that by going to view and then click on rulers. And I'm just looking at the three inch mark at the top because I know that's about halfway over from my photo. And I'm just kind of going by eye. I'm just eyeballing it and moving it around so that I think it's about halfway. Making sure not to include any of that bathroom shelving on the left, um, on the left edge of my photo. And then I'm going to file place and selecting the second photo. And again, I'm just scaling it here, moving it up and down with my arrow keys, just seeing what looks good. And then I've clicked OK. Next, I've selected the rectangle marquee tool, which is the third tool from the left. Um, third from the bottom and I'm just drawing a rectangle box over the section of the photo that I want to cut. So once I've drawn that box I'm clicking command X and that um, deletes that section and then I'm happy with the way those two photos are looking next to each other. Next, I'm ready to convert this photo to black and white. So I'm clicking on a gradient map layer, which is over in my layers palette. And they have several different options and I'm choosing one of the black and white ones. So you can see the difference there. You could also go to hue saturation and turn down the saturation all the way. What I've done is I've turned back on that gradient map and then now I am going to put a layer above it and on the left there you can see I'm selecting a color by double clicking on that, that white box and I'm just selecting more of a tan color because I like my black and white photos to have a little bit more of a creamy look to them. And so then on the right there in my layers palette, you'll see a little block box next to opacity and I've just toned it down. And so I just clicked on and off so you can see the difference there. So I'm ready to save this photo. So I just clicked the fly out menu, those double arrows in the top right hand corner and I flattened the image and then I'm going to file save as and I'm going to save this photo as a JPEG and I just named it with the week and clicked OK. If you wanted you could also add some text to a photo which I'll demonstrate how to do that here. Um, I have gone over to the toolbar on the left and clicked that little T box which is the type tool and I'm just drawing a box that I'm going to type in and clicking inside it. And on the top left, you can select what kind of font you want. And I know that I want to use this antique font. It's um, a font that I use throughout my album. And I set it at 100 point because it's a very small type. And I'm just adjusting. Um, I actually scaled down the, the type size so that it works better with the composition of my photo. And I put it in white so that it could pop up against my background. So I'm just moving it around and I would just encourage you to find the, the white space or more of the empty space of your photo um, for type and just keep it a little bit smaller. Next, let's look at how to use a photo collage. So I have created a photo template. If you'd like to use this, you can download it from the Two Peas in a Bucket website from uh, my album and I'll give you a link to that. But basically what I've done is I have drawn a series of boxes where I'm going to place photos and text in that box. And first I'm going to color the boxes with some of the colors that I used from the Emma's Shop collection by Crate Paper. 
And so I've downloaded an image from the web of this collection and I've opened it here. And on the left you see I'm selecting the eyedropper tool and I am going to use that to select some colors from this collection image. So I'm taking the eyedropper tool and finding a pink that I like and then I'm going over to my layers palette on the right and selecting the, the box that I want to color and then I've used the paint tool on the left and sorry I'm trying to hurry and catch up here and you can see I've, I've got it selected there and I'm coloring the boxes. So I'm just clicking on the box that I want, grabbing the eyedropper tool from and selecting a color from the collection image and then going back to my digital template, taking the paint bucket tool and then coloring each box one at a time. This way I know that my collage once I print it, it's going to slip right into my page protectors and it's going to work really nicely with the rest of my album since I've used this paper collection. And my template is ready to add type and photos. So I'm going to file place and I am selecting my photo and I've placed it here and I'm scaling it down And I actually should have selected the layer, the box, the top right, or one right, I think I named it, box first so that it places nicely over that. So I'm just undoing that. I'm clicking on the one right box, going file place, and I'm going to place that again. That way I have an easier time when I scale it down to be able to judge how I want that to fit there. So I'm just holding down the shift key and then pulling in on the corners of the box. And then what you're going to do is you're going to group this with that box by clicking command G or you can go up to layers in the, the menu bar and click on group with previous. And that way it'll take out the the edges and it's going to take on the shape of whatever you're grouping it with. It could be a circle or a different shape that you've used from the shape box um, in the tool palette. So I'm just doing this again. Now I've clicked on the two left box and I'm saying two left because that's what I've named that box in the layers palette on the right. You can see I, I have it right above, my photo is right above that box. And I'm scaling it down and here it's kind of tricky because I'm using a square photo instead of a rectangle so I've scaled it down and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to group with previous by going command G and with my arrow keys I'm just kind of moving it up and down and scaling it by holding down the shift key it keeps it in proportion and I'm grouping it with that box and now what I've done is I've clicked on the box and I've moved it over by clicking on that tiny box in the middle and now I've clicked on the box next to it the layer named to right and I've just pulled over that so it will compensate for the gap because it was a square not a rectangle so now I've gone over to my tool palette on the left and I click the type tool and I'm just drawing a box to add type to this and I want my type in white so I've selected that white color box on the bottom left under the tool palette and I've I know my font sizes and styles that I want to use because I've been using them in my album so I'm just typing in 24 weeks and I like to mix fonts so here I've clicked a script font and I've made it smaller and I'm just typing in a caption from this week. If you read my blog post you know that um, I used a lot of shortcuts in this album and so I referred to a diary and for these weekly notes I actually just copied and pasted captions from a Facebook album that I had shared with my friends and family so it made it really easy. 
You can adjust the spacing of the type by clicking on that little um, the box above where it has it shows an alphabet and then like an up and down arrow and you can just adjust that levels further down just lower the number if you want them closer together or increase the number if you'd like them further apart so before you go to print you want to flatten your image and then you want to save it as a PDF so um, you can do that by changing the format box there and then I've clicked cancel but you would just save it and then print Okay, so here is how I created my own circle labels. I created a new document by going to File New or clicking Command In. I'm naming the file circle labels and I'm adjusting my size to 8.5 by 11 inches, keeping the resolution at 300 pixels. I'm selecting my circle tool and I'm just creating it with a black color and I'm turning on my grids by going to view grid and I'm just going to draw the circle a little less than two inches because I know that will be a good size for me when I print them out and then I'm going to my layers palette and clicking on those two little arrows clicking duplicate layer and then with my with my move tool you can click just the key V, I'm moving that duplicated layer that I just made over. By holding the shift key, you can guarantee that it will keep it um, straight. And then I am duplicating both of those circles that I first made by holding down the command key in the layers palette, selecting all of the layers that I want to, to duplicate, and now Instead of drawing one circle at a time, I'm duplicating all four by holding down the command key, selecting all of them, and then duplicating them, holding down the shift key, and dragging those circles down. So I'm cutting my time in half each time. So now I just want to, I'm going to multiply these circles again, but before I do that, I want to color these circles in using the same technique that I shared before by selecting the eyedropper tool in the tool palette on the left and I'm just clicking colors from that collection graphic that I had saved from the web and I want a variety of cool colors and warm colors so oranges, yellows, reds, and pinks along with greens and blues and I also I think grabbed a more neutral cream color. So again, I'm I am clicking on the layer that I want to color and I can tell by it gives you a little preview in the layers palette. I can see which circle I'm I'm clicking on. Otherwise, you can name each layer if you'd like. And then I'm clicking the paint bucket after I've used the eyedropper tool and I'm just painting in that circle with one click with a new color. And eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these circles again at once by holding down the command key and clicking all of those layers so that I'm selecting them together. And then I will click on those little arrows in the layers palette in the top right hand corner and that's the fly out menu and I'll click duplicate layers and then I will drag all of those circles down by holding the shift key and using the move tool um, or by clicking V. The move tool is that top little pointer icon in the tools palette in the top left. So here you can see I'm scrolling through and selecting all of those layers. I'm duplicating them and then grabbing them with the, the move tool or clicking V and just dragging those down. Now I have enough room to make one more row. So I'm just selecting the four on the bottom and oops, I forgot to duplicate them and I just tried moving them. So I'm going to go to the flyout menu, click duplicate layer. After I've selected them, 
and now I'm ready to move them down. I just collected or selected four circles that I knew I would use a lot of. You could do a different row if you wanted. And again, you just want to um, you'll want to flatten this image first, which I did not do here. Um, but you'll once you flatten it, you'll go to File Save As, and you'll want to save it as a PDF. And then if it asks you for the image quality, um, because you're printing this, you want this at a high quality. And so you would select that setting. And then I printed these on photo paper because I that's what I had. And it worked out well because I ended up sanding the edges and distressing and the white showed through. Here are just a couple examples of where I used those circle labels. They're, they're under the question marks there. That concludes today's video um, showing my hybrid techniques for this album. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.